is still spinning. Dude, did you get his plate number? Yeah. And the challenge excites me. Look at my nipples. Look at them! Stephen, did you hear the news? There's a petition to get BattleBots to the UK. What? Well, well, sorry. I... There's a petition to get BattleBots to the UK. People have to sign it. Oh my God, brilliant. Uh, everyone, go, 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 do the thing. Do, do a signing. Link in the description. We'll, we'll get BattleBots. Because they, they, they need like 20,000 subscribers. 20,000. 20, 20,000 20, 20, signatures. Uh, and that's only for them to be considered to bring BattleBots to United Kingdom television. Uh, so let's, get, let's give them 50. Let's, let, let's do 50k. 50, 50. Come on, and then they'll really have to listen. Light it up, everyone! Battle bots! Fights! Robot! <laughs> landed perfectly! It landed perfectly on the table! No, okay, they're moving, that's a point. They're both spinning. Spinny, spinny. Both spinning. They no, hit each other. Good. Oh, fire. Oh, it blew up. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the best performance Axe Backwards has given this series. It was a really, really good, proper brawl. Uh, I like that Shredderator was landing so many hits. Shredderator was working really effectively. Those big, chunky boy teeth on it. Yeah, man. Uh, turn bits off of Axe Backwards, but Axe Backwards were like, nah, fam. Right. Calm down. Relax, Max. Chill, chill. chill. And it was holding up. Yeah. Which was really, really great to see and really impressive to see. And I really think they're onto something with that wedge. I hope that sticks. It's not a, not a, a dig at uh, Axe Backwards, but I liked it. I liked it. It yeah. wasn't like, it was still doing the wee wheelie thing. But see, I would go a step further. Oh, okay. And rip off Barbarous completely. Right. Oh, okay. So, but I would improve on that. So imagine the way the axe backwards is now with that wedge configuration. Imagine another one directly 180 degrees at the far side of it. So it's kind of playing itself like a little seesaw. Ah, uh, right? yeah, yeah. So when they drive forward, the front wedge slams down. Robots go up the wedge, hit the, the barrel. Likewise, coming in from the other side, all they have to do is hit reverse. Ah, that'd be pretty And the robot comes up the wedge at that side, hits the barrel. So that way your weapon's protected, your wheels are protected, and you're still able to dish out the damage. Ah, he's going for the wedge. Smart, smart, smart. smart. Yeah, uh, okay. Whoa! Oh, oh, that was all a right. tidy wee shot. All right. Oh, Shredder, stop spinning. I oh, no, he's back, he's back. That was like a mid-air flying kick. <laughs> Some incredible hits in this battle overall. I think the, the biggest kind of moment is when Shredderator gets a two for one attack where it rides up the wedge, clips the, the, the top of the actual barrel, battle itself, <laughs> and then as it's coming down, bangs against the side of the wheel and loosens it, like pulls just, just the pulls nut it, out Just completely. a little bit and you're like, okay, okay. Like even to the point that the team have actually copped on, it's like that wheel's like starting to rip out, go for the wheel, go for the wheel, go for the wheel. <laughs> yeah. Even with oh! 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 Okay. Oh, what's that? That's not bad. I don't oh! <laughs> Hit it again! Go for the other one! That moment when you just see the shaft and just the left but that part of the wheel, steady now. <laughs> Easy now. Easy now. Easy now. Easy now. Easy now. And then that beautiful shot. Yeah, it's... Wheels gone. It's really great because it provides this really wonderful catch point for Shredderator and those big thick teeth to come in uh, with, the we with the wheel kind of being separated and out from the wedge. Yeah, it's man. just so exposed and Shredderator can come in, catch that and just rip the entire thing away. I, I did appreciate the fact that Captain Shredder just backed off because one, I think they were worried if we go in for another kill that we'll be end up damaging ourselves man, more. There were moments in this fight where I was going, oh God, here we go, Shredder's died again. Why? Yeah. You're doing so well, come on. I came back to life again, I came back to life. And then, and then it did a, it did a thingy. <laughs> oh fuck. Uh, we, we can't stop spinning anymore. We have to wait until the battery well, dies. Can. No. Gigabyte team made a robo called Invader. Yes. And Invader had the same problem where it would not switch off. <laughs> so you could say that Invader must die. 
That okay, that was good. I like that one. That, that was good. Like I, that, that was that, that was that was precision. <laughs> that was precisely perfect. I, I didn't even write that down. I know you I didn't. just thought that. That was perfect. The length of time that lasted behind that was forty minutes. What? Before the batteries ran out, forty minutes of that just <laughs> constantly spinning in the battle. So all of a sudden, we we coffee got yeah. done. I still, still going because they obviously with it being a shell spinner, they can't get to the switch to turn it off. Ooh. And I think the reason why, because I was doing a little bit of research on this before we did this, it's using the old 2003 parts. Yeah. So it's not controller based, it's not throttle based. So whenever, like, and this is, could be making shit up, so don't listen, this is just purely theoretical. Uh, what's happening is with Shredderator, it's either on 100% or it's off. There's no metal ground, there's no throttle to get it up yeah. and down to certain speeds. And they're using a contact with that, they're not using a controller. Ooh, so if okay. you have that on full whack for long enough, That's it can weld the, the, the contact together. Oh! So literally you're buggered, like you have huh. to leave it to let the batteries die. Shredderator, damn! <laughs> God damn! Shredderator, damn! You're crazy boy! <laughs> <laughs> Holy Christ! Yeah. That's terrifying! Yeah. What? That's Shredder Raider. Yeah. America. <laughs> <laughs>we tend to know what it's like to have a front hinge flipper get its whole handed to it by a Durham spinny you want to show that a front hinge flipper can work oh that's not fire, good fire fire firing the firing nothing's happening I really like P1, obviously, like there wouldn't be an outweight here otherwise. Uh, complete with retractable, removable spoiler. Uh, <laughs> as a built in feature. <laughs> yes, it's ecstatic. Um, oh, Jesus Christ, man, like this, this did not go well. I mean, at least we flipped Hobgoblin. The Jerry Tree! Oh, Hobgoblin, watch out for the front flipper! Copperhead won the ground battle. Fair play to P1, they gave it a shot. They did. They went. Uh, we can't get around the sides of pack. Let's just go for the face. Hey. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Let's break his fist, fist with our face and see what happens. And now you just got your face broke. Uh, badly. badly. Yeah, uh, like on the first hit, that really spells curtains for them. Oh. Oh! oh. No! Yeah. No! Those wedges at the front are way too big and like. And flappy. Flappy. Flappy wedge. Flappy it's wedge. a lot of flappy wedges this season. You know, yes, it's, yeah, it's, flappy it's, wedge. It's, it's like bad, flappy panel gearbox, flappy wedge. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think like the best thing they could have done is just have one straight flat ramp yeah. at the front, like just and actually have it razor sharp at the end. Oh, <laughs> just like in real life. <laughs> uh, you know, so they could get in underneath Copperhead. Because on Copperhead, this is a, a different front configuration for them than we've seen previously, yes. where it's those super, two super rounded low. side panels. And I really think had P1 just went with something fully flat at the front, they could have negated yeah. that and got in underneath and flipped them. I'm not sure what difference that would have made, because they are invertible, but it would still have been your better option of getting a couple of extra attacks in, maybe trying to control the fight. But no, like once that first hit takes place, that's their entire side, like of the the wedge bent Man, upward. Man, that was terrifying! Like literally, the power in that that drum to literally buckle the wedge. Come on, P1! Yeah, oh, the wedge. Oh. Something fell out, which was confusing me. Yes, I thought it was a it was a shock mount. You said it was a motor. I think you're right. You think it was I, a motor? I yeah. think it was a motor, like a part of a brushless motor. Yeah, because like their drive is just gone, gone after that. Yeah. Like I mean, they do try one more valley in charge. We we literally haven't felt, like properly mentioned the fact that their spoiler fell off. Well, spoilers at, at for this start. fight. Spoiler <laughs> alert! They lost. But <laughs> <laughs> they they come in for another hit, and it's just a full oh, backflip. I mean, slam straight down. Yeah, yeah some par in that copperhead weapon. Tonight on World's Wildest Car Accidents. <laughs> I haven't seen bloody nothing a P1. What's going on? Why didn't they show the fight with Kronos? I, oh man, I was looking forward to seeing Kronos. I, yeah. like, I think it must have been like a really quick fight. Yeah, because you were telling me like Kronos, they they didn't have a lot of time to get ready for the series. I don't know if they had time to test it, but in that short clip, 
they were moving. The the ring spinner was, was spinning up, but not, I think not impressively though. No, it wasn't but I fast think spin up. the fact is that P1. What well, you didn't see in this fight is that I think the speed has like increased with P1, so they were on them really quickly. They did the front hinge flippy thing, which was good. Yeah, and managed to yep, just, um, just gently beach them on the beach wall. Them on the yeah. wall. I was like, that that was pretty good. And the other thing is the sound of Copperhead. Oh man, it's like a hundred murder hornets on cocaine. Like a, a st- I, I, ha- I have I have I have shock memories holding chainsaws. I had a shock memory. As soon as I heard that spin, I could hear like a bag of tar. Oh, it's back! Oh, you can hear the death hum of the drum of Magnetar! Imagine that taking Tombstone off. Black Dragon. Yes. So that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I would love to see that one. Because I'd love to see, like, like just, that would be a proper, proper test to them. But I would like to see Bloodsport. I think Bloodsport and them, the two of them together, that, uh, we're going to see a lot of sparks. Yes. <laughs> no, make fucking documentaries with really fucking <laughs> I'm done. Sometimes it just be like that. Oh, he's moving. That's good. That's good. Oh. F- Axe? Oh. It did the thing. Shut up. Hey. Oh, God. Right. Finally, B the fires its axe. And I laugh, and you laugh, and everyone else laughs. And John Reed dies a little inside. He was just like, hit it. Again, a good hit. <laughs> because he had... Jump posting! Jump posting! <laughs> you did this! Do your it. work, you predictable bastards! <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a meme and a half! Do your work, you predictable bastards! I feel bastards. so bad for him. He seems like a nice man. This is the best version of Beta that we've seen ever. And yeah. that was even without seeing the axe fire in its last fight. Oh, like, like the... In fairness, the Beta team did put up a picture on their their, pa- their Facebook page of how the, the mechanisms work. Yes, they did. By uh, God. Yeah, 4,000 PSI in the main tank, which is then put into the buffer tank, which is 750 PSI. That gets fed directly into the main valve itself for the weapon. That is punched upward. So, like, imagine 750 PSI is punching that ram upward. It's teethed on the side. So, as it goes up, it's swinging the axe over. And while it's doing that, the wheels are retracting and the electromagnets are sucking it to the floor. That happens in a second. I, uh, demons. Created this. Wizard, that, wizard demons. That is, that is fucking scary. insane. And the fact that we finally got to see that in this episode was a blessing and a curse, really, because they were put up against Rusty, who didn't really have any way to protect themselves from a beta attack. More like one away. So, like, whenever beta did manage to hit them, it was kind of curtains. I mean, like, even at the start of the fight, before beta got a chance to fire the weapon, they were still using that phenomenal driving skill and speed that they used to conquer Rotator earlier in the in the series. Yeah. Because if you look at it, like Rusty is a is a full on heavyweight machine. Don't let its look fool you. Oh, he fired his axe. Hey, what the hell? Hell? <laughs> One point to Rusty. What? It's a real chunky boy, and Beta were able to just push it around the battle box like it was nothing, and break one of, and bend one of those forks on the front of it. They bent the fork at the front, but it was the second attack, like frontal, like full on, yeah. that bent the rest of the forks down, which basically meant that Rusty had yes. no traction. High sound. It was, it was, he was, he was sort of going like, okay. When he reversed, he could do. He could reverse, but yeah. he couldn't go forward, which was was sad. But then the the moment that was the oh god, the penetration. That, oh shit. Yeah. yeah, it was just dead. Yeah. Oh, my god! Penetration! Holy Christ! My shiny metal ass! Yeah, oh, it was rough. And, it, and again, that's the big issue of putting Beta up against Rusty, where if Beta lands that hit that cripples Rusty, you know John Reed's not going to come back in and go bang, 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 bang. No. Because it will flatten it into a pancake. So he knows, like, just a couple of hits, okay, can you move? Right, I'm backing off. Get the count in. Yeah, like, the second hit was more of, like, a scuff. It did dent, but, like, it was more of a yeah. glancing blow. Is a quick <laughs> Oh, he's fucked. No, stop, please. It was so cartoony, the first blow, because it actually leaves a full, proper imprint of Beta's little <laughs> yeah. pill hammer design. It was, uh, that was terrifying. And then you think, 
Okay, he's backed off. Now. He's leaving on that. No, John was like, no, no, no. Go in for one final kill. I did appreciate Rusty like transfers going like, come on, Peter. Come on. Yeah. Eh. Oh. Bye. Came, came, you know, fairness to Rusty, though, came quite close to targeting that vulnerable back section. Two times. Yeah. Two times. It was, it was good. Like, he didn't just go, like, controller down, I have lost. He was like, I am yeah. going to keep going until there's no movement. And there was there was no movement. I, I, I did like the fact that Beta was trying to push Rusty to the pulverizer to get more points. But I would I would kind of be really sad if the pulverizer kept hitting the, the back section because yeah, it would I just mean, Rusty just got fucking hammered, didn't it? Like if it wasn't <laughs> Beta, it was the pulverizer, you know. It's like a bit of, Rusty's a bit of a Terminator moment. He's got one red eye, one white. Getting the shit hammered out of it. <laughs> At the start of the fight, I was like, I've never seen this tactic before, but I do realise what the driver was trying to do was get as away from him as quick as possible to try and like line up a shot because he was angled. I've never seen a robot do that. Yeah, to battle sideways, box. yeah. Yeah, I've never seen that. I was like, oh, so like what's the thing. idea? Like, do a lap of the battle box and then come in, like build I think up some speed. We, we, the idea, because Rusty is brushless uh, tank trades, that I think his idea was to like get round really quickly, you know, and then come from behind to get to the back section. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but unfortunately uh, that, that did not work. So, no. but good good attempt, good attempt. It, yeah, it was a good yeah, yeah, great attempt. Like I mean, like you're being thrown in with the big dog there, and uh, you you know you you died with dignity. Oh, John! Oh, look, look! Oh, John! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Christ! Oh, that was di- that was right up that to the hinge end. <laughs> Spin, move. Try to get broken oh. back. There we go. Oh, that's, that's a little that's knock, it, knock there, no boy. Oh, 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 Sparks. We make a half hour documentary out about them Sparks there, boy. <laughs> so he's got the weight. Oh. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Vastly superior performance here from Hypershock in this fight. Then again, it was fighting a climbing frame with sentience, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to do any disservice to Mammoth, of course. You just, you don't know if it's going to create an almighty upset. Yeah, it's unpredictable. I'm, yeah, I mean, like, look at the huge fight earlier in this season. You know, so whenever it came to Hypershock, who didn't really perform too well in their fight with Gruff, mm. they were like, are they going to cause an upset or not? But Will Bale's really brought it, I think, in this fight. Yeah, it was, it was proper drifting. It was, it was doing some drifty. Spin this. Doing some drift this. Oh! Oh! oh, oh nice oh. way! He was trying. He, he, was, was, he, he was Tokyo was, drifting. <laughs> he was trying. The whole way around it. He took off a paw. A claw paw. Yeah, thing. yeah. Um, I love that. Uh, what was it that Kenny Florian said? Like he went into beast mode or something like that? Yeah, proper beast. It's like, yeah. like, like blah, berserker mode. Uh, blah. You can see he was targeting the wheels. Took off the, uh, the front flanks. He decapitated the arm. What? The arm, he broke that's, it in two. That's, that's a way. <laughs> Chain's gone. Yeah, they lost the weapon and, and that sort of that was That on, was you know. crippled. Like that, that, I think it was like two hits. And you can see it starting to yeah, bend. Yeah, because it, it, as it's spinning around again, it gets stuck. The, the, the <laughs> twanger gets stuck in the, <laughs> the phalanges. The like, it's like, stop it, yeah. stop it, please. Yeah, and like, it just couldn't seem to rotate anymore. And then that big hit the Hypershock lands on and sends it flying toward the wall. That just kind of makes it crumble and, and almost yeah, fall apart. And then like chains hanging off it. I love its, its best ultimate weapon. It decided, if you have broke me, I will capture you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I thought, oh my god, it's going to be a double count out. Yeah. We're going to actually see the refs going like, what do we do? Or like uh, Hypershock had to sort of cut its way over the whale's stomach. The corpse of Mammoth has temporarily created a prison for Hypershock. <laughs> <laughs> The head for the, <laughs> no, the mama thing. Anything with the battery pack, man. Not yeah. the battery pack. No, just Bang! whatever you do, don't hit the battery pack. Uh, Will Beals here's that as go directly for the battery pack. <laughs> Ruin it. <laughs> Did you see that man's face after? It's like, oh no. He's like, oh! Oh! Oh, oh, oh like no! Bob. He's wishing he hadn't asked him to. Oh! Hi, Papa. He's gonna take me at the back and batter the crap out of and me. He's like, oh, Will Ben's done a good. I did a bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Any fight that ends with the lipo fire, approve. You always like to see the smoky snake. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and uh, great to see Hypershock actually getting the W. Fucking left. <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> <laughs> English motherfucker, do you speak it? <laughs> That place? That's an Xbox controller. It is. What is this thing? Yeah. Alright, moving. That's a good point. Still flipping. 
Oh, 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 Spitfire, don't get hit at this time. All right, so Spork and Ock, they finally had their Spork weapon attached this time around. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the titular Spork of Spork and Ock. Uh, I really like this idea. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. Like It can extend the whole way around the back of the machine, be used as a, a barrier or some sort of defense. Uh, but then it can move into clamp it. Yeah. And then uh, while they're clamping down, they can do lefties. And Lefty I, I like that idea. Yeah. Uh, again, like I, I tend to agree with what Chris and Kenny were saying, where it is a first time bot. You know, like it's the first time competing with this machine in BattleBots itself, and this is really the test bed and season for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're going to come back again next time around with uh, a much beefier design, a much stronger design, uh, and something that will be more effective than what we ultimately saw here because it, it seems quite weedy. Oh wait look at the wheel. Well. He ripped the wheel from the and sporking out the side of it. He's crippled it. See the bent wheel. Oh, oh. Sub-Zero dashed their hopes. Yeah Sub-Zero I was really impressed with their speed and driving skill in this yeah. to be keeping up with Spork and Knock and controlling it around the battle box. The flips again really really impressed me like with the height that they can get on that now that's a vastly different yeah. machine from where it was when it first began. Though saying that too you could tell that, that, that Sub-Zero was still having a little bit of electrical gremlins where they, they were trying to line up to get Spork and Knock sometimes yeah. and it would like judder this way and judder the other way. Even the driver himself was like, ah, uh, the, the gremlins are back. Oh, wait. Draw flips. Flippies. Oh, no, it's, it's not retracted, oh, wow. probably. No, it's gonna go. Oh, no! No! The scary moment that Sub Zero did where it's flipping, which we, everyone's like, like little, little Nick Spectacular moment, and then you just see it, like, not explode. But like the whole ram leaves the entire shell of the robot, which was terrifying. Yeah, because the the, the actual ram, the piston itself, will be uh, mounted on a hinge mm. in the the base, the bottom of the chassis. Uh, so whenever uh, they they flip, it's being tilted back as it's coming with the arm because it's all attached together. Uh, it's not quite down the alley of the likes of say spawn again. Spawn again on the attack. Oh. And there, and bang! I like that Sub-Zero still had that issue, but could still continue using their weapon. That's impressive. The fork thingies kind of concerned me, so they do, where, like, even when it was on its back, it was getting back on its wheels, like, the, like those fork hinges move all over the place. My worry with Sub-Zero, even in this fight, was the fork's actually just high centering and... Oh! That moved. Did that wall just move? It moved! Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, the, they're like the pinball. Like pinball yeah. That's the first time I've seen those. It was, it's a good um, attempt with sporking up. For an, uh, I really did like that. I love the fact we got to see the sporky thingy and the lift, even the lifter worked as well. Yeah, yeah, for, for the brief moments that we saw it. And again, I love the idea in theory. Yeah. I'm a big fan of control bots, but also a fan of a control bot that can operate outside of just being a control bot. Yeah. So if you think about it, if if they go back and improve this machine, you could have a robot that technically has three weapons. Yeah, like Sub-Zero was starting to really show that the next fight that they come along, be prepared, because you're going to fly out of the arena, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, this was, this was a fun fight. This was, was a fun fight. fight. Yeah. She's, she's getting up there again. Fair play to some zero. He did say there was, he was he panicked there, he says there's still some issue. Come on, Bale Spear. Poke him. Oh, okay. Do you know what? If anything, I think this fight kind of shows why a lot of roboteers don't protect their wheels. Because yeah. this is what happens. Because Bale Spear's got the four big chunky tractor tires, uh, and then Tracer came in and uh, ruined its. Fucking life. Yeah, man. Like I really love Bill Spear. Like I love the fact that it's it's a spiky thing. Like you know, I like. It's the trying fact. something different. Yeah, I like. I, that. I think you need to applaud that. But at the same time, it's got those white sections around the tires, yeah. and the Tracer kind of made a mockery out of it. Yeah, no so, legs left on. Unfortunately, no legs. It was like McGregor. Tracer has had rotten luck, and I know this is an experienced builder, uh, hasn't competed in a long, long time, and. Uh, yeah, uh, I gave him the business, rightly so, uh, last time for not having a self-rider and 
again in another fight that they didn't goddamn show the hijinks fight. Uh, yeah. Same bloody thing happened as the ribot fight. Yeah, just yeah. one head just uh, upside down. You can hit the broad side of a barn door. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Get the other one! Hey, Get the fighting. other one! Hey! Oh, no. He's jammed the wheel! They used the minibot really well, had the forklift. Really unique forklift designs to it as well, where like they kind of go... Uh, yeah, that's beautiful. Like that, and underneath, uh, utilised to perfection to hold Bale Spear in place until Tracer could slowly and tentatively come toward them, because obviously, if they turn on the dime, like turn too quickly, they'll carp over. Yeah, yeah, and I love the fact that they they precisionally went for the sides because that's mostly where all the speed controllers and stuff are. Yeah, but I will say one thing: I am kind of happy they didn't mess up Bill Spear's weapon system. Yeah, that's hydraulics. That's hydraulics. That's what three thousand psi that'll be running yeah. at. So I do love needle like like I love the loves how you, proper teamwork, mini bot, heavyweight. Team up together, not like one mini bot going. Where, where am I going? Where yeah, am I? yeah. What's this? I'll just shoot fire at me ass for no reason. <laughs> Bill Spear is. It's a very interesting machine. I know that like those little barn door things at the front. They are superficial. They are supposed yeah. to act as like a lightning rod almost. Like they're supposed to take punishment no. from spinners, and that's fine. They can break away. The trouble is, there's nothing behind those that can protect the wheels. Yeah. And unfortunately. That kind of led to their ruination, but uh, a steady performance from Tracer this time around, yeah. I'd say. That's good. No more, no more hits. He's done enough. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hey, they're moving. Boy. Again, another vast improvement from another machine that got a little bit of a shaky start in this season. Whiplash looking way stronger this time. Well, I say looking. I still don't like the design <laughs> of Whiplash at all. It's very boxy and very basic, you know. Better wedgets on the front this time around, though. Um, but what a really great dominant performance against a control machine in Gruff, no less. Yeah, this is a proper little like grapple fight. Yeah. Like I really enjoyed it. It's one. just... It, yeah, Gruff has got those flamethrowers, but once those go, its lifter slash grabber seems to be really weedy. And like even going into this fight, they were at a disadvantage because one of those forks at the front still looked bent. Yeah. There was like one of the little wedges at the end that wasn't attached to it. Yeah, so you're coming like kind of like you don't have all your cards on the table. It's kind of like my cards have fallen off the table. They, they looked very shaky in this battle, man. Like I mean, in terms of uh, the driver. Yeah, but I think after the hypershock uh, fight, like them. Big hits. I think there's a lot of internals to repair of this. <laughs> oh, oh no! It's the same problem. It's blow that way back. I do love that design of the lifter slash vertical spinner that they've got going on. Their driving seemed to be really madly on point. Like they were really on top of Gruff all throughout this battle. Gruff, again, yeah, it's got the big shooty flames, the big flamethrower. I think you almost put yourself at a further disadvantage there. Whenever you have this great big fireball, you can't see what you're doing or where you're going. Yeah. Battles like these and all robot fighting, Split second time and like really matters. Yeah, and I think Gruff were panicking in this battle, especially that moment when Whiplash gets that undercut hit. Like that was yeah, and uh, that I would blame more on Gruff. Like it was a combination of the two because uh, Whiplash got in, flipped them over, but they immediately like it, it's panic driving. Yeah. is what it is because like, the second they go over like we can't be upside down not with whiplash so they fire the lifter and that throws them like they're not thinking where's our robot gonna land because yeah. again split second timing so it lands right on top of whiplash's spinner not only does it do that it lands in a position where that spinner can cause some serious damage to the and i think it's fair to say softer underside of gruff mm -hmm. and especially one of those wheels too so if you look after that big hit gruff has just lost that mobility edge that they needed to keep up with with whiplash i did love the fact there's a two two grapple bots like i love the, the back and forth <laughs> Oh, what are you doing? Oh. What are you doing? What have you done to yourself? That was you the doing? motor. That was the motor for the, the weapon gun. The lifter or the spinner? No, the spinning. It felt like Graf left auto when your car's about to explode up. Yeah, There's because the smoke. I, both machines were smoking for very different reasons. Because yeah, Whiplash got some really great hits, and I love that tactic that they did, 
where it's all about efficiency. Mm. So it's like, if we can't turn around and get our weapon into you, we're going to bring our weapon over and get it onto you, even though it's not, it won't be spinning the right way. So I liked whenever like Whiplash had their back to Gruff, they could just bring the arm straight over yeah. and hit them from behind. Like that trope you see in movies, whenever someone's looking at you, but like they shoot someone. Yeah, you're like, oh my like God. Like that, without even looking. Yeah. Uh, but done in real life, I'm with robotics. It's amazing. <laughs> it's sexy. So uh, yeah, and then the, the big, big explosion. It was an explosion. It wasn't like it, the, the last explosion. It, it was boom, boom, bang, bang. Uh, nice. Whereas with Saw, this was like, ah, my dreams! That, I think, has caused damage to the electronics of Gruff. Oh, they can see it's all going into the, the machine itself. It's not going yeah. near a whiplash, it's going into the inside So perhaps of it. Uh, whenever they, they started smoking, it was a case of the batteries overheating, mm -hmm. a case of the electronics burning out, something like that. With whiplash, that was their weapon motor for the spinner. Yeah. Because if you notice after that, the lifter's working fine, mm -hmm. the spinner tries to spin up, but yeah. you can see it's kind of going Locking up. Yeah. And not really connecting with Gruff in the way that it was doing earlier in the fight. Stay in there, boy! <laughs> Stay in there! Oh, go on. Oh, oh, I no! oh wait, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh. But to me, Whiplash just had this dominated, like they had this in the bag. Yeah, they, they wanted to really prove, like, like, we, we, like the first fight, we lost it, we need to show the selection committee that we are we want to be in the seated version and i think yeah. in fairness yeah this was this was a really really good showing for both of them i've definitely whiplash yeah that's such a unanimous whiplash split decision gruff <laughs> fuck off mr tits <laughs> it's the roll of the dice mm -hmm. a great machine can go up against another great machine one can come away looking better than the other yeah you know um or like a crap machine can go up against a brilliant machine and the crap machine comes away looking fantastic yeah you know it's so unpredictable not, not, not that there's any crap machine no, well. no, no. but uh I, I, you know the theoretically yes but like it, it is it's like it's, it's a lottery with con robot combat you can you can go I, i'll put all money in this robot ah, i've lost my money i've lost my house yes. <laughs> living on the street now yes yeah, the a fair, let me live in a barn <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah, for, for, for yeah. fucking play to them, man. Yeah. That was a really strong fight. So it's at this point in the show where we're introducing a new section. New oh. section way. This is CPZ. Comment Patrol Zone. This comment comes from our review last week. It's one that we picked out at random. Uh, and it comes from Melereth. That, uh, that's the story I'm sticking to it. Yep. Uh, who says, uh, Recently, I rediscovered the beauty of robot battles. Lots of fond memories watching Robot Wars as a youngster. I just wanted to say thank you for the commentary as someone with only a very basic understanding of robotics. It's so interesting to get the POV of two people who are actually in the business. Really? Uh, like we're, we're closer, but we're, we're, we're kind of outside the window <laughs> looking in going like, it used to be there. Anthony, hold me! <laughs> we tried, didn't we? We tried so hard! Between the jokes and the fun, I feel like I'm actually learning quite a bit, both of the robots and the goings on behind the scenes. I catch myself watching the fights in a different way now, trying to apply the little tidbits of knowledge I'm picking up here. Ha ha! It truly adds to my enjoyment of the show. So thank you so very much. Well, thank you very much for your very kind comment. Uh, and comments. if you want your comment featured uh, on next week's video, you know where to write it. You know where to write it. We might choose yours. It'll be a good time. Right, BattleBots, Season 5, Episode 7. Overall thoughts, opinions. I thought this was a fairly good episode. I enjoyed uh, the volume of the fights. I like that recap of where everyone's at score-wise. Yeah, that was a good one, so it was. I didn't like the fact we didn't see the fighties that we missed. That was kind of annoying. No, I mean, like... It don't do it in that way. No. Is no. what I'm saying. Like, don't do it as as though it's recapped footage of fights we've already seen. Yeah. Do it in a, in this battle, they did this. But then, oh no, shit blew up. It was a bad yeah, time. Yeah, was bad. Do it like what they used to do. Ah. Like, don't just gloss over it. Like, actually tell us, like, hey, th this is what went down. Here's the big moments of what happened. And so we have a rough idea of what went on without it being too boring. Because obviously there were fights that were... Steady and not spectacular. Yeah, uh, but like apart from that, yeah, it was it was fun. It was fun battles. Fun it, was, battles. it was fun battles, and uh, and of course I loved loved that little comedic moment with Mammoth and Axe backwards. Oh, that was that was beautiful. fantastic. Like, wait, 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 applaud that you. was great. Whoever came up with that, take a bow. Did you get their number? Damn. Damn. <laughs> 
Yeah. That was priceless. That was nice. Uh, so, final score? I would go... Uh, eight out of ten. Eight out of ten? Eight out of ten. I'm going to drop it down a little bit. I'm going to go for a seven. Oh, okay. A, but a solid. A solid seven. Solid seven. Yes. So that is an eight out of ten, seven out of ten for Boobly Boos Season 5, Episode 7. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Remember, we do have a Patreon where you can watch all of our unedited reactions to all of these fights. Uh, that's nice, isn't it? And uh, I think that's about it. So until next week, goodbye to you. After. And you. And you. Farewell. That's super good out there. No, 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 no. Oh, 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 oh you read it. It's so gone. I actually really didn't mean to do that. Yes, I did. <laughs> you die! You die! You die! <laughs> oh, I'm really breaking it. You went too far. What? You're powerless. Oh, God. Oh, God. You're going to get sued. <laughs> <laughs>